If you're looking for the perfect stitch to stop the unraveling of your fabrics, or if you're working on some knit fabric and need it to stretch, but you will need to sew it right along the edge and don't have an overlock machine or a serger, this is what you need to know about the Foff Quilt Ambition 630. So first off, there are stitches on the machine that stitch, stitch, and then jump to the right. Those are the stitches that we want. There's actually quite a few. I am gonna be using stitch number 24, maybe I could just start with that one right there. So you can see that it's gonna jump over the edge and it recommends foot number three. So foot number three, it comes with this machine. This is the one with the red marker that's adjustable. Now you're gonna see me use this for a couple different things throughout these videos. Overlock stitching is one, one of them. We can use it for some top stitching, some stitching in the ditch. We also use it for doing a blind hem. So when you do pick a blind hem, stitch number 16, you're gonna see the same foot number come back up. Next, it does have this little groove in the back, so make sure that you do pull down and engage the IDT so it fits in there and easily pulls the fabric, both layers at the same time. So that's that little symbol at this point. Tension, just leave it where it is, it's awesome. Especially if you have the same weight of thread in your needle as you do in your bobbin. But before I put this foot on, I'm going to adjust it. So it might, who knows where it is when it comes to you, but you wanna turn Turn this wheel on the side until the red marker is lined up with that small little pin that you can see in the sewing area. So I'm going to just bring it so it's directly in front of it. And then when I'm sewing, I'm going to be able to guide the red marker right beside the edge of the fabric. The stitch is going to jump over that pin and into air. And if you've ever done a zigzag stitch along your fabric and notice that it all curls, you're going to love this because number one, the foot is going to support the stitch over that pin so it won't let it curl, so it'll come out perfectly flat. Plus having a guide, oh, makes it so much easier. So I'm gonna show you two examples, one on this and then one on a knit fabric, kind of putting a neckline in with some ribbing. So this is how it's going to look when you get ready to stitch. There is a small groove. You can slide your top thread down and kind of to the back. So when you stitch, just set the foot so it's nice and even up against the edge of the fabric and then just begin to sew. You're just gonna keep your eye right in the front where the fabric is being guided beside the little mark and just let the machine do the rest for you. All right, if your last stitch is still kind of on that little pin, you'll notice you can't really pull it out to the side, so just pull it straight out to the back and then bring it around. So look how flat that is. So it took a couple stitches, jumped over the edge, and totally secured that raw edge from coming loose and unraveling during future washings of that particular project. So sometimes people will do this on a single layer and then sew their pieces together. Some will sew their pieces together and then just kind of overlock the raw edges all as a pair and put them together. But let's just switch. We're, we're, all we're switching is fabric. I'm not gonna touch anything different about that stitch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of ribbing, fold it in half, line it up next to the curve of say a neckline, and we're gonna do the exact same stitch here. So when we line it all up, it's gonna guide this stitch, but this time the straight part is going to turn into our seam. So this is kind of like a overcast and seaming all at once. So usually at this point, ribbing is usually pulled a little bit because it's usually cut smaller than the opening. So usually you're kind of pulling it to match uh, it to go around the area. And so I'm just kind of pulling the, the, the curve next to the little red guide that we're following. This will give you a good idea. Don't forget to switch over to a ballpoint needle when you're actually doing real work on knit fabric. That way you're not punching holes in it and where it will weaken later. But look how fun that is. It's, it's perfect. It looks professional and it has the give you're gonna need. So all done in one pass. So try out, there's other stitches in this machine. Anything that kind of jumps over to the right is what you're looking for. And you can easily secure and make your edges look very professional, all with a sewing machine.